Hi, folks. Pastor Mike Spalding here with my good friend and big brother. I am Pastor Casper, and we're here together to encourage you to keep listening to Deception Detection Radio, because we're both on this network with our individual shows. Yes, and yes. And we're going to be doing some things together as well, not just not saying them all. Hey, folks, tune in Deception Detection Radio, some of the best programming in Christian talk, news, encouragement, and Bible studies. God bless you. God bless Sinners that transforms us into saints And I'm so in love with you For what you've done for me Here I am to worship you Without any restraint You're the only way, the truth and life That makes me You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Welcome to another edition of Spiritual Encounters, and I am your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. I'm here with my co-host in an undisclosed location deep within a military compound working for the Lord Jesus. Pastor Brandon Gallops, how are you doing tonight? I'm blessed, brother. And uh, listen, you have to be deep in a military compound because we're involved in a war, brother. We are indeed. A spiritual war is going on. An invisible war, just like germs. And, and people don't see the germs. They're invisible. But under That's a microscope, right. we can That's see right. them. It seems odd that, you know, we are so willing often to, to keep receiving forgiveness from the Lord in the almighty name of Jesus, but it, it's simply amazing how little so many people truly want to extend forgiveness to others who have wronged them in some way. And you and I see this as we're doing conferences together. Um, most of us will, will, will freely accept Christ's mercy, grace, and love. And yeah, how surprising, how rigid, um, how legalistic and merciless can people be towards others that, um, that they feel hurt and offended in times past. And, and a lot of times then they end up in your programs and in the rehabs. Um, however, in our Holy God book, The Supernatural, we learn, um, like in Matthew 18, um, you know, that we, let's get to a point where we, we, we don't, we, we release everyone so there's, they have no obligation to, whatsoever to us. I mean, if we could understand who we are in Christ, um, we can simply copy love all those frustrating people, um, even in the ones in the political arena, um, the, those <laughs> People that are frustrating, that, that they're, they're perishing from lack of knowledge. Um, but they would remain powerless to offend us because we won't join them in their sins. We just won't help comfort it and entertain the spirits of unbelief either. You know, we just do what the Lord Jesus said to do. Um, as a pastor, you know, I've spent a good deal of time in you and I collaborating on this, uh, you know, United in Ministry. Um, Again, you know, our science is, uh, we, we talked about neuroplasticity at our, our most recent conference, the chain breakers and um, how people can get free. Maybe we should talk a little bit about what happened last weekend. No, I, I would definitely enjoy doing that. And you're right, Casper. Uh, you know, forgiveness is, listen, I'm just convinced that it is the absolute key to our freedom. Uh, in Christ is is letting go of past hurts and pains. I think that is the biggest thing that keeps us in bondage, um, even as believers, you know, uh, and and unbelievers alike. I think it's the, I think it's the biggest thing that keeps us in bondage. I, I see it with every man uh, that I minister to in our program. Uh, you and I see it uh, when we're ministering together out in the public arena, and it's a warning that I give because we listen. We confront the idea here. Uh, in, in our re rehab program, we confront that within the first few weeks of the guys being in the program. Once we get their mind to a place where they can think and reason and listen, um, that's one of the first things I start confronting them with. What's your relationship like with your earthly father? What's it like with your earthly mother? Um, 
and 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 you know what what do we have there what are we harboring what kind of bitterness and anger and rage and hatred are we harboring and why and the guys that are willing to let that stuff out and begin to deal with it seem to be the most successful and and seem to gain the most freedom and so as within a few weeks before them exiting the program that's always a warning that i give them listen we spent six months dealing with this issue of forgiveness and and you you are deep into the process of forgiving people that have truly wronged you and seeking forgiveness also uh, for people that you have wronged. And, and I always give them a warning that, listen, this is life. You're going to have more disappointments. More people are going to hurt you. So don't get caught in the same trap again. Don't allow future disappointments to derail you and take you right back down the same road that past disappointments and failures uh, and hurts and pain. So I think that's something we have to be aware of just because we deal with a specific area of unforgiveness. Now we have to be diligent and we have to be aware that we're going to have to deal with that again in the future because it's, again, it's life and we're going to have hurts and, and pains and, and disappointments and failures. And we have to be willing to forgive. It is a process. It's a lifelong process. Again, we, we defeat, help defeat the enemy by the word of our testimonies. Um, we had some wonderful testimonies at the conference. Maybe you can share the one about the woman whose um, skin disorder was healed. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. Thanks to the gift of technology, which we're using right now, there was a lady who um, actually uh, was watching the live stream. And uh, back here where I live in Alabama, and of course, we were holding the conference live in Florida, and a couple of days after um, I was at the conference, a couple of days after getting home, uh, she called my wife and she said, I have to meet with you and, and, and Brandon right now. Uh, I can't wait another minute. So I was actually working uh, on a job site with some guys from the ministry and my wife called me. I was able to turn loose and we spent a couple of hours with her. And, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's not even a guess anymore, as you know, brother. I mean, it's just science when you sit down with someone and they're broken and they're suffering physically and mentally. It, it's a broken relationship here on this earth. And typically it stems from a broken relationship with the father, with the earthly father. And that was her case. Um, and some real hurts and real pains, um, you know, stuff I can't even imagine. I've not lived through it. But we were able to minister to her. We were able, able to help her begin the process of forgiveness, able to explain to her who she is in Christ and, and, and who Father God is to her. Uh, that he is a father to the fatherless, you know, and uh, a father to the orphan and and all of those things. And and uh, she was suffering with a serious, serious skin disease, um, just a debilitating case of uh, psoriasis. Um, her hands, uh, which I physically saw, I didn't see her feet, but she said they looked the same way. But the palms of her hands looked like somebody had taken a razor blade and sliced them in places. Blood coming out of them, the skin cracked open down to you. I mean, you could see flesh down there. And um, uh, so we prayed with her. I called you and, um, and, and was able to get some, some good advice from you. And you prayed over her via the telephone while my wife and I laid hands on her. And uh, I saw her this past Saturday and she showed me her hands and the splits, the cracks in her hands were gone. There was no more bleeding. Uh, the hands are still uh, the skin is still rough and obviously still in the process of healing. But she told me, she says, I've been sleeping this week. I'm free of physical pain for the first time in years. And she said, I know. And this this is why she's being healed right here. She said, I know that God is going to heal me the rest of the way. And there was not a doubt in her mind, brother. And how many times do we see that in scripture where Jesus would tell people, it's your faith that's healed you? Glory to God. What a wonderful testimony. Yeah. You know, well, we're doing these, we, we, you and I, we, and, you, and your dad, um, Pastor Carl Gallops, we, we, we've done a lot of conferences together, prophecy conferences, and people come up and they, they want a word. And, and I, I, right. I tell them a word. My word is read your Bible. Yeah. That's a great word to start with. It tells us in, and this is as prophetic as it's going to get, Deuteronomy 28, in verse 1, uh, it says, um, and it shall come to pass. That, that's a prophecy, and it shall come to right. pass. If, there's an if there, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, 
that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee, overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you, if you just do what God's saying, right, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But of course today, you know, many people in church don't even know what the commandments are anymore. We think there's only two, right? So, That's true. That's true, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's it's interesting that, um, uh, you know, it, it flips it the other way in, in verse 15. I mean, you know, listing all the blessings and then, you know, you'll be blessed in your home, your business, your marriage, your, your finances, everything will be blessed. But if you don't, you know, obey God's, commandments and you step outside of his protection plan as it were then it, it starts to name all the curses i mean god's not the one that puts curses on anybody when you walk away from god on, on your own accord because you're not a robot even though they're pushing that whole ai agenda now right um That's exactly right. everybody's brain right but it opens up the door for the enemy um to come in and bring curses into your life and in fact, in, in, um, I think uh, Jeremiah 28, 27, it even talks about um, hemorrhoids. It, it, it calls them hemorrhoids in, in, the, in the King James, the scab, you know, that cannot be healed. And I've never met anybody that had hemorrhoids that, that thought that was a blessing. So, um, and these are like, you know, the, that, that word actually, hemorrhoid, uh, translates into tumors as well. Um, but I recall the verse 61 talks about in every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law this law um then the lord will bring upon thee until thou be destroyed that that's talking about all the you know like the the wacky luciferian scientists and deep military undergrounds you know coming up with things like lyme's disease or whatever they're concocting that hey let's let's put these on little ticks and send them out whatever you know i mean it's all included there in Deuteronomy 28 these are the the curses and the blessings. And the Lord even tells it, you know, if you don't get it, like choose blessings. It's so much better. So, um, you know, basically the, the, the same goes with the, the blessings that God follow, you know, the sinner goes, the, the curses follow them. Um, Proverbs 26, 2 says, is a bird by wandering, swallow by flying, the curse causes shall not come. It can't, it can't just come by itself. I mean, think about the, the devil hates everyone. He even hates the people that work for him. He hates everyone. He's full of fear. And uh, and he can't just take you out just because he feels like it. He's got to have a legal right. It's all, we don't want to give him a legal right. But when you entertain things like unforgiveness or fear of the future, you know, fear of the, the AI, the, the, the political agendas unfolding, you know, the Middle East things right now. The, I mean, you know, let's face it, the world's getting darker. It's not getting lighter at this point. I mean, it says when you when these things begin to happen, look up. Your redemption draws now. We are so there. And um, even if you, you, your father and, and Rabbi Seb's new book, you know, talking about the um, Rabbi is it Duri that, that wrote the note um, about um, the name of you know Messiah is Yeshua, it's Jesus, and it's, it's called a, caused quite a stir over the last couple of years. Now they're doing everything they can. To, pull out all the stops and the fake news and you know try to discredit this thing yeah we, we know this is unfolding right before us today and people are not ready yeah no no they're they're not ready brother and and and, and you're right um it's uh you know even the thing with the kaduri story like you just mentioned the the latest book uh that my father has released and and uh yeah zev parat uh, co-wrote that book with him and and uh, they were talking about that on freedom friday just this last week the uh you know how the media is already attempting to silence it and israel zev is getting threatened uh you know that he better not bring this book into israel and uh it'll be destruction for him and his family and you know, I mean, the thing is, I think it was my dad that asked the question, well, if the note was a fake or if it never really existed, then why are you so worried about it? You know, why, why, why are you trying to silence it? So, you know, we, we definitely see that in, 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 in the world today. And, um, it, you know, um, what you just touched on about, uh, you know, giving Satan a legal right that he can't just, you know, he doesn't have the right to just come up and attack you for no reason. And it's interesting. I do a teaching on that where I can only find two things and two ways in scripture where Satan can gain access to you. And that is through us granting him legal authority or God giving him permission, which we see in the book of Job. 
you know, where he came before the throne, the throne of God and with the angels and God granted him permission. But it's interesting if we read that entire story of Job, what happened at the end? God restored everything. It was done for a purpose. It I'm wasn't done. Not to interrupt, but I am going to interrupt. At the beginning of that story, it, 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 we find that Job had fear. Fear. That's exactly right. He opened yeah. the door because it says, Job, the thing he feared most came upon him. His kids were like party animals. They were, he was always making sacrifices. Oh, they're going to offend God. i got to go and do something about it. And he was filled with fear at this point. And that opened the door. That was a portal. That was a gateway. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. And and so, you know, like I said, I mean, I can only find I can only find two ways that Satan can gain access to us as a believer. Of course, as an unbeliever, we're you know, that that person that's an unbeliever, they Satan doesn't have to ask permission for anything. You know, you're working for Jesus. You're against them. That's exactly right. So but, you know, as a believer, um, you know, like I, said, I can only find two ways that he can gain access. Either either we absolutely kick a door open and and give him permission and invite him in. Uh, you know, and there's some very specific ways that we can do that. Uh, you know, you touched on fear and, um, uh, you know, unforgiveness, of course. We've, we've talked about that already. Um, witchcraft. Well, how can a believer practice witchcraft? Well, the, as you know, brother, the, the Greek word that we see for witchcraft is pharmakia, which is where we get our English word pharmacy. And the, the definition of that word in the Greek is the use or administering of drugs. We've we have to be very careful what we're putting in our body, especially mind-altering drugs. And uh, also means it's something that's hidden. And so, I mean, it, it would be like an analogy if you, if if I show you um, the sky at night and we look at all the stars and you've got a telescope and go look look at this one particular star. And just as I <clears throat> show you that star, you take a look in the telescope and say, you know, an eclipse happens and you don't see it. It eclipses it, right? It obscures it. It's occultism. That's right. And of course, if your neighbors are hanging That's out, exactly. you know, doing strange things in the middle of the night with a, a big cauldron and rituals, you know, <laughs> that's another clue. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, <laughs> listen, sexual immorality, brother. Um, you know, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I'll ask the question all the time. You know, How many people have ever been taught that all sin is the same? Of course, the most. <laughs> Everybody says, well, yeah, absolutely. All sin is the same. Well, not according to the word of God. First Corinthians chapter six says flee from sexual immorality. Uh, and don't you know that this sin uh, that, that says flee from sexual immorality because all other sins are outside of the body. And don't you know that this affects the body? And don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So, in other words, what that tells us is that sexual immorality is different from every other sin. Uh, it's an open door. It's an absolute gateway for the enemy just to cruise right on in and do whatever he wants to do. Um, involvement in secret societies, uh, you know, um, uh, the Masons and others, uh, is an, it's an absolute open door. Uh, Ephesians Four, I think it's four or five right in there talks about um, have nothing to do with the evil deeds of darkness. Rather, everything that's done in darkness should be exposed by the light. You know, we should have nothing to do with with secrecy and and taking secret oaths. And, uh, you, you know, <laughs> I don't even want to get off into the Mason thing right now. That's a whole nother topic. Are you I'm trying to tell me that you can't out. be a Christian and a Mason at the same time? Brother, I can't judge somebody's soul, but I can tell you that there's a serious conflict of interest there. And uh, you're either for me or against me. But let's move on from that one. <laughs> I, I think another, another issue with that is, you know, listen, the, the, the church today, I mean, the mainstream church, it's, it's not displaying the power of the Lord as it ought with signs and wonders and healings and miracles that would follow you, right? It, it, instead, it's, so people go looking for power in the wrong places, like we, we consider mm -hmm. occultism, we consider um, any of those secret societies or, uh, for example, the witch that wrote Harry Potter, right? I mean, Christians supported that thing, right? Because right. They, they didn't know any better and, and, and they just, they're looking for some kind of power. Oh, well, we'll go watch this movie or read these books or whatever. And they're not realizing they're opening themselves up to the wrong kingdom. Um, yeah. 
this is second uh, uh, second Timothy three five having a form of godliness, yes, but they're right. like, they're sin, sin away yet, but they're not sinning away. They're they're, they're going with the flow of it. Um, if yeah. we really want real power, the, the Lord told us, and, and he, He's going to lend us some of His power. Jesus said, "All power in heaven and earth is mine." Right. So he's just right. dropping us some. That means that the enemy doesn't really have any. He's, he's using fake news, right? Yeah. And, well, and Luke, it's, Luke ten nineteen, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And yet, so many the, the church is afraid to move forward and, and 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 display that power. It's there. I mean, the Holy Spirit residing in every true believer. So there's great power there to be. Unleashed in, in, in situations as as God decides. Yeah, you make an interesting point there that because the church is not displaying the power that's been given to us, you know, freely. Jesus, like you just said, you know, says, "I give you, I give you all of this. All that's been given to me, I give to you." And and so the church, most of the church, uh, especially the Western church, is not displaying that. So I was teaching a class yesterday to the men here in our program, and a young man in the program, fairly new. Uh, actually comes from an atheistic background. Um, family's been involved in occultic activity. He played around with the occult uh, in his past. And I was teaching yesterday, the specific class I was teaching was on uh, witchcraft in the Bible and what that represents and pharmacia. And I was taking them on a journey through the scriptures and showing them drug use all throughout the Bible. And when I do that, I'll ask the question, when we see the word, the English word witchcraft, what's the first thing that comes to our mind? And most of the time I'll get answers, you know, like Satanism or uh, occultic activity, uh, you know, a pentagram on the ground and a seance and a candlelit room, things like that. And this young man, he looked at me and he says, I can tell you what that word is to me, represents power. He said, I have been searching for power my whole life. And he said, that's where I've always searched for it. So you're exactly right, brother that people are on a quest for power. And isn't it interesting? That's what the whole AI movement is about, you know, and, and the transhumanist movement, the merging of, of, of man and machine. It's about power, brother. It's about, it's, it, it's about life extension technologies. It's about living forever. It's about enhancing the mind, enhancing the physical being of the body, um, building superhumans and super soldiers and, 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 you know, uh, half, half, you know, humanoid, uh, robot, half human, half robots. Um, and we want to live forever, brother. We want to have power and we want to be in control. We want to control our own destinies uh, and, and, and our lifespans and everything to do with that. And, and so absolutely that quest for power is being sought in all the wrong places. Um, you know, how many people sitting in church on a Sunday morning would all too gladly um, allow a chip to be put into their brain if they were told it would allow them to live forever uh, or if it would give them some type of uh, super intellectual mental abilities. Um, and all, all of those things are happening right now. And and so we, we have to be aware uh, of where we are receiving our power. Indeed, we do. On uh, th This is unfolding at such a rapid race right now. I mean, you know, I joke with the upper room the other day. We, we got trouble in River City. Um, got trouble with a capital T. You know, rhymes with T, uh, with pool and all that. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, it's it, it's just unbelievable what's going on. With, with, and, and, and so many of the none of the churches, you know, that, that are they're standing up and and it's sort of like I said, we got this political nonsense. You know, political correctness is really come in and mess things about. Um, there's this, um, I wrote about this in, in Unmasking the Future. There's um, a chap named Zoltan Esteban. Um, and he, you know, now think about it. The, the, the whole idea is for them, they want to achieve immortality without God. And I think that's going to probably happen. We got the scriptures that say, you know, men are seeking death and not find it. Um, they're going to cry, let the rocks fall. So this is, this is coming. It's the word of God. And he's he's so so what happened there when people and before the as Jesus as in the days of Noah and um, you know we're like right back to that right so the whole Nephilim thing that's unfolding um, people lived to be nine hundred years old in the Old Testament so now we're we're seeing people like um, Sultan Istvan 
saying, you know, marriage um, won't make sense when humans live to be a thousand years, you know, together. Um, and then he's also all a proponent for um, gender fluidity and all that. Um, <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. This stuff is, you know, think about it. People didn't have mobile phones, you know, just the 10, 10, 20 years ago. Not everybody had the phone, but now pretty much everybody's if in the Gobi Desert, they have them, right? So this is how fast this stuff is coming down. Um, so we really need to, you know, warn the church, which is what we've been trying to do. Um, uh, they're, they're talking about, you know, the, the, the haptic um, suit. Uh, he's talking about um, simulating, you know, uh, um, artificial um, reality. So um, then God warns us about strangers will be entering the sanctuaries. Well, we have that happening now. Um, this this whole mystery Babylon thing is unfolding right before us. You've got high-level people and you know, embracing false religions and all the rest of it. And the Lord says, come out of it, you know. I mean, I, I, I share again that you can't kill a Christian. I mean, we're eternal beings. So all you could do is temporarily change someone's physical address for a little while. And then we're all coming back here on flying white horses. And it's going to be fantastic with the Lord Jesus. You know, it's interesting, brother. You, uh, you know, you just mentioned about strangers. <laughs> Strangers in the church, strangers in the temple. Um, just this, let's see. This is from February the 4th. So when was that? Yesterday. Uh, this is from the Chicago Tribune. The title of this article is United Methodist Face Vote on LGBTQ Issues. Will it rip the church apart? And if you were to read the article, it, it goes on to tell us that the uh, United Methodist that his uh, denomination has actually called a special assembly. They typically only meet every four years. Uh, and when they do, they, you know, they, they take a look at issues within the church and kind of adjust different guidelines and things like that. And they've actually, this is such a divisive issue right now within the United Methodist denomination that they've called a special assembly to, um, to decide Will they officially endorse the LGBTQ agenda? Will they officially start uh, ordaining LGBTQ pastors? Will they officially start um, performing LGBTQ uh, wedding ceremonies within the United Methodist Church? And I'm going to tell you, again, if you were to go on and read this article, I read it yesterday. Um, that one of the answers they've come up with for this is we're just going to leave it up to the individual diocese. In other words, we're not going to make a decision. We're just going to let each individual diocese and each individual church do what they want to do. Therefore, not taking a stand. Takes me to the book of Revelation, brother, where Jesus is giving his words to the seven churches. And um, uh, which church is it? He tells, uh, you know, you're lukewarm. I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you're not, I'm getting ready to spit you out of my mouth. Um, and, and that seems to be the route that the United Methodist denomination as a whole is getting ready to go. It certainly appears that way. Sadly, um, this is the way it is at the moment. So, um, because I, I, again, I think that the church hasn't been fulfilling its requirements. It's not been preaching the gospel. It's, uh, where, where do you hear most churches today, they're not teaching on repentance. The word sin is now politically incorrect. We want to hear about things, words like sin, right? Um, and, and right. I mean, we've taught so many times, you and I, about um, you know, studying the scriptures, these demonic beings, these invisible disembodied spirits that need permission to enter your body to, to be able to express themselves in their evil nature, um, as we find like at the, the gathering demoniac. And then Jesus... Um, uh, cast out, you know, a, a legion of them, which would have been quite a lot, right? I mean, how big can they be? They're hanging on the end of a dendrite or a synopsis, right? Um, and and yet, you know, he, the Lord never wastes anything in His economy. Uh, he, he, just before this happened, you know, he had the the, the, the miracle of feeding the five thousand with the two fish and five loaves of bread and. And they had the, the, the guys go out and the disciples, you know, pick up the leftovers. They had 12 basketfuls left over. So it doesn't waste anything. No matter what you've gone through in your life 
all the experiences, none of it's going to be wasted. It's all for a purpose, a divine purpose. He works all things together for good, for those who call his plan and purpose, who love the Lord Jesus. And yet, he, you know, he wasted 2,000 swine, making the first doubled ham in history, right? So, <laughs> um, but I, I would look at this stuff and, 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 you know, could it be like, you know, from the, before the flood of Noah, you know, we had the, the, the giants and the Nephilim, the, their, their bodies drowned. And, and the world was, you know, overrun with them at the time. They were called the mighty men of renown that uh, probably created the gibberin. The heroes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the watchers, you know, they, they were left their heavenly abode, came down here to the daughters of men. I, I'm, I'm sure they, they didn't take them politely. They didn't date the, the women, you know, they just did what they wanted. However, they did that with genetic splicing, gene splice or whatever. But I found it interesting. Um, so they've got these half breeds like they have today in, in, in designing in laboratories around. We, we know that this is going on. Um, so now we've got these angelic hybrids, the, the titans, as scripture tells us about. And, and if you look that up in, in the Greek, the, the titanos means grays. So it's possible those fallen angels, the shape shift um, into a form of, of a human that can have intercourse with, with other humans. I mean, what's going on here? Um, do they purposely do this understanding they'd be causing some aberrant um, genetic changes to occur? Uh, we, we got you know evidence like in Deuteronomy um, chapter 3 talks about King Og. He, he had a bed that was like, you know, 15 feet long. I mean, how, how big was this guy? Bigger than Goliath, six fingers, six toes, double rows of teeth and all that. You know, the stuff that our, our good friend Dr. Ali Marzuli, you know, and Richard Sharp in investigating for years now the, the, the elongated skulls and other kind of relics they're finding. So the, the, this stuff is unfolding right before us. And yet a lot of people just aren't praying fervently. Um, I mean, remember, it, it took you know, the angels 21 days to, to break through and Daniel's fasting and praying. And, and somebody in the church, they, they pray a prayer and then they give up if something doesn't happen straight away. That's exactly right. And um, I'm looking, let's see, right here, Jasper, this is uh, this article. I used this on Freedom Friday last week, and it's out of NPR uh, from February the 1st. And it's uh, new U.S. experiments aim to create gene edited human embryos going on right here in the United States, uh, a technology that they told us they would never use here. Mm. CRISPR technology. Don't worry, we're not going to use this on here. And now it's being done already. And listen to how they're pitching it. This is the first sentence uh, of the article. Um, a scientist in New York is conducting experiments designed to modify DNA and human embryos. In other words, change the way God created things. Uh, he, he is seeking to uh, design to modify DNA and human embryos as a step towards someday preventing inherited diseases npr has learned so they're selling it to us as listen to this great technology we're going to eradicate disease we're going to prevent your children from being born uh with debilitating diseases and generational diseases inherited things listen who wouldn't want that for the child right and if that's what these technologies were truly being developed for i'd be the biggest fan of them but you and i know very very well it may be used for that, but that's not the intent of what it's being developed for. That's not what it will ultimately be used for. Um, and it's interesting, it's, you know, a Chinese scientist that was all over the news just within the last couple of months took all kind of heat, um, uh, you know, for the same thing. And of course, now, it, you know, here's my take on it. If they're telling us that they're doing it, it's been happening for a long time. And the technology is far more advanced than what they're actually telling us the technology is. More than likely, there are already truly gene-edited humans walking the face of the earth. So are you suggesting that when the uh, head of CERN said, well, we might send something into another dimension or something from another dimension might come into our yeah. dimension, you mean that possibly they've already done this thing? And, and, and the technology is maybe a hundred years advanced to what we think is actually going on. I think absolutely, brother. I mean, look at Internet technology. Well, we know now that the government was using 
um, you know, the, the crudest forms of Internet technology and email and things like that since the 1970s. Yet the, 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 the public was not made public until the 1990s, the mid 90s, and then didn't become mainstreamed to where it's just everybody, every household, every human being until 10, 15 years ago. But it's been going on since the 1970s. Again, it's like fire. You know, we can cook your food and warm your home, or burn down the entire neighborhood, right? So that's exactly right. In the hands exactly. of the wrong minds. Yeah. So. But but oh. it is even even if you look at if you look at that technology I was just addressing the CRISPR technology, CRISPR Cas9. It what's it about? Power, power, power. We want to be in control. It's about life extension. Uh, it's about perfection, trying to perfect this, which can't be done, this side of this side of the next life. You know, uh, we've already messed that up. And, and, and so it just it, it all goes back to what you said earlier, you know, that people are looking for power. They're looking for power. And because of the lack of power that the church is showing and, uh, you know, the lukewarmness that, that the church has fallen into as a whole, people are looking everywhere. And, and we're missing our responsibility to show people where true power comes from. So possibly as in the days of Noah, they, they tapped into the forbidden knowledge and forbidden power and, and the gene editing back then, which created giants and maybe dinosaurs. Were, maybe dinosaurs were meant for to feed the giants. Maybe they had dino burgers back then. <laughs> no, it's interesting. And, and think about this, brother. So we may look around and and say, oh, my gosh, you know, it's it, it's terrible. The technology is the worst it's ever been. No, it's not. You know why I know that? We're still here. We're still here. We are still here. There, there comes a point in time where God says enough is enough. And that's what happened in the days of Noah. And we cannot argue that there was something going on with DNA and the manipulation of DNA and the genetic system that God put into place in the days of Noah. If we just read the scriptures for what they are, that, that is exactly what was going on. Um, and so here we are again, doing the same things again, but we're still here. God has not sought to destroy the planet again yet. So in our arrogance, we boast that we're the most technology technologically advanced generation in the history of mankind and you know, uh, that our knowledge precedes any any other uh, any other society or or time period in history. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know, when, uh, when Oppenheimer <laughs> exploded the, the, the atomic bomb, you know, operation uh, Manhattan, the Manhattan Project. I mean, he he was married to a, a lady that uh, her husband died. He was, he was the head of the Communist Party of Spain. So I mean, he was all immersed in that whole communist thing and. A lot of so he explodes the atomic bomb test, and one of his students apparently said, uh, "How does it feel to be the first man to, you know, explode an atomic bomb?" And he goes, "I, I, I I'm the first man this side of the flood to do it." Yeah. So I mean, they they tapped into forbidden knowledge of things that were going on before the flood, and that book of Enoch's, uh, some scholars think, was taken onto the ark. Enoch died perhaps a, a week before the flood came. And uh, his, his writings were preserved on the ark. And then people got a hold of it again. There's another incursion of the, the Nephilim invasion, as it says in the, you know, uh, Genesis 6, 4, then and then after that. So here we are again. It, and isn't it interesting at the attempt today to try and place the book of Enoch back into the scriptures? And to try to elevate it to the level of scripture. Um, and, and I, you know, I get that question all the time. Well, what about the book of Enoch? What about the book of Enoch? And we can't deny its existence. And we can't even deny that that the New Testament writers were influenced by the, by, by the, by, you know, the book of Enoch. I mean, Jude mm -hmm. talks about it. Um Peter, if I'm not mistaken, we, we, because uh, it does. It's mentioned several times in in, in the Old and New Testament. Yet yeah, we we've got Flavius Flavius Josephus' work, the ancient 
Jewish historian, we can learn a lot from that. Um, That's right. right. He's the one that said in about their time, there was the man Jesus. It was lawful to call him a man who went about doing great and mighty miracles. And then the, the principal leaders got jealous and had him crucified and said that the, uh, the tribe of the Christians, you know, he, he reappears to them. I mean, it's all there. It's from secular, and he's not the only one. There's other secular writers that uh, that era that wrote about the, the miraculous resurrection. Yeah, and listen, um, I, I am convinced that the fascination with the Book of Enoch today stems from the same desire that we've been talking about, brother. Power, power. People want something. They want a secret knowledge. They want to know something that some that nobody else knows. Listen, I see it. I, I, I'm honored to have the ability to speak at different conferences and stuff, but nothing frustrates me more than the people that are there to try to gain some secret knowledge so they can lord it over someone. You know, I know something you don't know. Uh, and that's not what it's about. You know, um, if, if we're if if we're looking for things to be revealed to us from God's word, then it should be that we're looking for them to be revealed revealed to us so that we can then use them for the glory of God, use them to lead others to Christ, use them to show others the glory of God. Not so that I can, you know, hold, stick my chest out and I know something you don't know. I know, you know, let me tell you how it is. And you see that attitude so often. You're right. And then, you know, it, it tells us in, in like Mark 16, and now that's taken out. I remember uh, several times I was doing a conference or teaching somewhere and someone said, that's not in my Bible. Things that, you know, we've got modern translations that things are missing from now. I mean, because it talks about these signs shall follow those that believe in my name, you know, the castle devils and speak with new tongues and take up serpents, they drink any deadly thing, like you know, GMOs or whatever, you know, it's not going to hurt them. Lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. And so, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, even if we didn't have that verse, we could find it throughout other scriptures to validate, you know, Killed the sick, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, uh, cast all de devils freely, been received freely, give. So, um, I, I there may be people listening right now, watching this, that need to tap into the power. That's right. <laughs> and, um, you know, maybe maybe you just never made your peace with God. Maybe you've been sitting on the fence. Maybe you're like um, the churches that, that they don't you don't know how to make a decision. Well, it, it's very easy. I, I've had people um, ask me over the years many times, um, how do I get saved? I, I don't know what to do. How, do. how do we do this? He made it so easy. Anyone could do it, right? We just pray right now. Just say this from your heart out loud so both invisible kingdoms hear it, and then I'll let you follow up, Brandon. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now in the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Messiah Yeshua. I freely confess and admit that I have not been living right before you. I recognize that I truly need you and I want to get right with you forevermore. I ask you, Lord, that you would please forgive me now of all my sins as I forgive all those that have sinned against me. You fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I would experience the true power that's only available through Jesus. Lord, you said that I would believe in my heart that God has raised Christ from the dead, I would be saved. And I believe that with all my heart. I confess it with my mouth that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my Lord and my Savior. And I want to live a life that's glorifying to Christ from this day forward. I thank you, Lord, for saving me, washing me clean from all unrighteousness. And I thank you, Father God, that as you've forgiven me now, I can forgive all those that have hurt me, all those that have offended me, both sides of my generation, all the way back to Adam. I thank you, Lord. I'm so eternally grateful for what you've done for me. I pray this in the almighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Father, I just want to come to you right now, Lord, and I pray for the ones that may have just prayed that prayer, Lord. I just pray that, that your peace that surpasses all understanding, Father, would just fill the room with them right now, Lord, would flood into their heart. Lord, they would feel your physical presence in their life right now, Lord, and, and just all around them. Lord, I want to lift up the one that may be listening to this broadcast, Lord, that, 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 is, that is convicted right now that they are a child of God, but they have they have given Satan legal authority in different areas of their life, Lord. I just want to pray, Lord, that they would make that right right now, Lord, that they would seek forgiveness from you, that they would seek forgiveness from others, that they would forgive others, Lord, that they would begin the process of closing those doors. Lord, we want to pray for uh, for generational curses to be lifted, to be broken, and to be bound up, never to return, Lord, for the ones that are struggling with that, Lord. We just want to renounce in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Father, the, 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 the spirit of addiction, Lord, spirit of suicide, the spirit of de depression and anxiety, Lord, the spirit of fear, Lord, the spirit of pride, the things that control us, Lord. We ask for, for, for healing to come, Lord, physical, mental, and spiritual healing healing to come to people's bodies, Lord, that you would just pour out your grace and mercy and love on your people, Father. Lord, we lift up the church to you, Lord. We pray for pastors all around this country, Lord, and around the world, Father, that you would bring boldness into the pulpits, Lord, that we would be bold for your name, Lord, that we would be uh, n not be lukewarm, that we would be on fire for you, Lord, that we would cause a stir in our preaching and teaching, Lord, that we would speak truth no matter what the cost. And we would just lean on you for the protection that comes from doing that. Father, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, almighty name, amen. Well, if you just prayed that with us um, and you've entered into salvation with Christ, let someone know about it. Let us know about it. You can contact us at theupperroomfellowship.org. And Brandon, you can contact Pastor Brandon at Redeemed. That's right, Redeemed Ministries. You can find us on the web at Redeemed Men, M I N, uh, short for ministries, redeemedmen.com. Uh, you can email us there. You can also get in touch with us on Facebook at Redeemed Ministries Church. And both of us will be in Ball Ground, Georgia, on the 1st and 2nd of March, right? What is the date again? Yes, I'm confirmed. I'm confirming those dates right now. Yes, it'll be Friday night, March the 1st, and all day Saturday, March the 2nd. Yes. And we'll be in ball ground at the Upper Room Fellowship, which is located inside the Art of Living Ministries. It's 1600 Hallbridge Road, ball ground, Georgia, 30107. You can find that on the website, theupperroomfellowship.org. And uh, it'll be an amazing time because we, we've seen... Wonderful things happen when we do that because we are two wild and crazy chain breakers. <laughs> but people, you know, you got bondage and things, people dragging along this baggage for years and years and this generational liquid. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to get free. We've seen so many people transformed by the power of God, the real power, the true power. So um, come on out. It's, it's, it's free. And uh, we we'll, we'll, Freely been given, freely we give. So come and, and, and learn what you can and get free from, and, you know, we talk about addictions. Um, that could be anything. Anything you can't lay down as an act of your free will can be an addiction. That's exactly right. And, and we want to see people set free and it's got nothing to do with me or with you, but it's got to do with the Word of God and the power of the Word of God. So I um, pray you'll come out and see this, and hopefully we'll be live streaming it as well if you can't make it physically to, to Georgia. And we'll see everyone next time for another Spiritual Encounter. We've got some amazing guests coming up, and uh, um, I will be at the, the Hear the Watchman conference in Dallas, Texas, with uh, all our good friends, uh, Pastor Carl Gallops and Rabbi Zeb Parat and Ali Mazuli and Derek Gilbers, and the list goes on. Uh, Josh Peck will be there, the Skywatch. Um, team of Skywatch Family TV. So um be fantastic. Go to hearthewatchman.com and check this out. And uh, after that, I shall be back in UK at undisclosed locations. So we'll see you all next time for another spiritual encounter. God bless. Oh, I have to
the same love for each other There should be no division in our story That we always love one another Let the world see we are Christians And we won't bear down Let the world see we are Christians With a message so profound That signs and wonders follow us around Let us praise the name of Jesus And do His word By one spirit we're baptized into one body Let us stand together and not be deterred That the Holy Spirit surrounds us in His glory Let the world see we are Christians And we won't back down Let the world see we are Christians With a message so profound That signs and wonders follow us around Welcome to another adventure with Spiritual Encounters. We are here to help represent God's work, not ours. Besides the insightful biblical teachings shared by our host, Pastor Casper, we are also very blessed to be able to bring you outstanding interviews with some of the most sought after deep thinkers and voices in Christendom today, helping to make a difference in this world for Christ's sake. We want to keep it that way, to be truly effective in internal matters, truly demands on prayer and being led of the Holy Spirit. If you, like us, long to see the Lord Jesus, Yoshua, glorified here through spiritual encounters, we invite you to join the prayer team. There is nothing more exciting than participating in intercessory prayer with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are a totally faith-based ministry, and so please give and support spiritual encounters as you are led. Truly Grace and Radio have a lot in common. Grace is free to us, but cost Christ an untold price, we may never fully understand this side of heaven. Radio is also free, too. 
It costs nothing to turn on your dial or stream audio, but it costs us a lot to stay on the air. Spiritual Encounters is almost entirely listener-supported, a privilege, but rare things in these days of big church radio corporations. We've carefully trimmed our budgets to all but wartime essentials, but operating costs are a fact of life. If you've been blessed through our programme, here are some ways you can give back as the Holy Spirit leads. Consider becoming an underwriter by contacting us or simply go to the upper room, fellowship.org and scroll down on the main page to donate. is a production of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. Visit us at theupperroomfellowship.org. This program is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. The intro and outro music is performed by Casper McLeod from his album, Communion, available at theupperroomfellowship.org. In my face, since I learned to pray, I got a new 